Well, Marisol, hey, congratulations on your championship uh, with Smowdown. Thank you so much. How, how, how does it feel yeah. to be uh, to win that uh, that title and belt and not to mention to be, you know, the first woman to do so? Oh, it is. It's it's I think I'm still in a state of process um, this win um, it's how I, I started pretty much from the ground up started going to live events um, and got connected to um, My apologies. I think that was my connection. Oh, no, you're fine. You're fine. You still okay. hear me okay? My audio is okay and everything? Yeah, I could hear you. Go ahead. Okay. Um, uh, no, it's just been, I, I can't emphasize enough how much, uh, how thrilling it has been to be a part of, to be a lifelong movie fan, to be a part of uh, something that, something that kind of, validates all your it's like we get our own kind of jeopardy with this and i've been uh really excited to be far, part of a first uh in this game um and a game that's had a lot of firsts and has just kept moving forward and something that unites so many people can you still hear me I can still hear you, yeah. Okay. Ex excellent. So um, so in, in the case uh, with this, um, you said you started off as a viewer. What, uh, or, you know, as part of the audience, what may, made you uh, want to participate in this, you know, fantastic journey? Um, it was realizing, it was a little bit of a couple things. One, realizing that um, the Schmodown was growing um, and I think the live events really helped me realize just how much I thought I used to think it was something, um, it started very close knit. Um, that's the beauty of how organically it's grown. Um, I thought it was something very, very LA based, um, and that you had to be a part of, you either had to be an actor or somebody in the industry in LA to necessarily, um, or you had to have an in to know somebody to be a part of it. Um, and really going through the live events, when Shimonon started to fly all over to Chicago, to New York, um, and then particularly in Orlando, which was the first live event I attended, I realized um, seeing everybody right in front of me, it just made everything so much more real um, and so much more within reach. Um, and I just had a, an internal just like leap of faith and, I, and, and just told myself, why not? Why not just starting out here in front of you um and that gave me uh, this big confidence boost to just um to just kind of stand up in the crowd and put myself out there and and take a look um in the community from the top to the bottom has been uh, uh great people and bringing bringing me in and bringing many more in most, most excellent art do you consider yourself a film buff? Obviously, you have to be one, right? You you kind of have to be to survive. I mean, the beauty of, I, I absolutely do consider myself a film buff. Um, and the beauty of even just saying that is because it is unique to every person who says it. Um, and the Schmodown embraces that, uh, which is why, which is why I can't recommend it enough. Um, uh, being a film buff means something different to everybody because everybody has their own unique in or their own um, their own unique starting point to what connects them to film um, and what they gravitate towards, even while uh, still wanting to learn more about the rest of it. Um, and that if if that describes you to any any part of you have intense like 
intense uh, niche things that you're a fandom of and love learning about, or if you love just watching as many films as possible, kind of wherever you are in the spectrum of absorbing film um, and loving and learning about film, there's a home for you here in the Schmodown. Are, so how much film watching do you actually do? And do you like yeah. study it or you just have like an awesome memory? Um, I watched film. I have a regular diet of film ever since I was a kid. I, I didn't track it specifically. Um, but film, that was my, the language of film, that was the way I, I enjoyed, even as a young kid, that's how I enjoyed storytelling. That's how I absorbed narratives. Um, that was my primary, you know, I, I like to read a little bit as well. Um, a little bit. Uh, and certainly watch TV, but film became my primary source of storytelling and expanding my imagination. Um, so I had a constant diet of film when I was younger, um, racked up a lot, um, racked up um, over a few thousand films in my lifetime watching, uh, watching film. And I had never, I organically absorbed a lot of information about it, would spend time, like I'm sure many fans are, are aware of, like things like IMDb, or the back of the day, like box office mojo, like learning, learning, absorbing information about film. And then when, when I got to the Schmodown, um, that added this next level, like this deeper dive that became almost more academic, um, the ways that I was absorbing information about film. Um, and you, I'm not going to lie. I definitely ratcheted up, uh, the intensity in which I absorb a lot of, a lot of film. Um, I was getting to a point, um, especially when I was first really started to compete in the Schmodown, I was getting to a point where I was watching up to four films a day. Um, and, and that was how enthusiastic I was to be a part of it. Uh, but you pump the brakes on that. If you, if you really do love appreciating each film for what they have, what they have to offer, you pump the brakes on that uh, really quickly. And that's what I did because you can't, you can't, you can't really give the memories and the experiences time to time to settle. If you watch too many movies, there is such a thing as watching too many movies. Um, but uh, I settled back down to um, usually about one or two a day, a uh, pretty steady diet of one or two films a day. And that's what, that's what you feel motivated to do when you are um, competing for it. I supplement that. I have years of natural film knowledge and I supplement it with, um, with actually specifically looking through filmographies, as many competitors do, um, with uh, filling in those details uh, about films that you have not seen yet, um, but you're still very aware of whether it's a director, certain director, or actor, or genre, you're very aware of people's careers, um, directions they're moving in. So it's a combination of all that, and I think the best in this game, um, the really committed in this game, will, will always tell you that some combination of all of that. That's some quite of work Sorry. done. Yeah, <laughs> but it starts with having the the foundation. You can't do this. You can't do this unless you have already been loving and watching movies your whole life. Wow. Now, of course, you know your fans would always like to know what what genres are is your actually favorite. What who who who's Marisol? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm really fortunate to say that I have a pretty broad taste in films. Um, there's, there's not a single genre or something of films that I rule out, you know, I, there's always a new, if something's made well, if a story is told well and, and made well, you, you can find something to enjoy anywhere. I'm a firm believer of that. Um, and I'm an open book when it comes to film. That being, you know, um, that you kind of get drawn to, um, that you really have a knack for and you revisit more often than others. Um, and I would say certainly I have my own deep, deep, dumb loves of certain things like um, Harry Potter films. I do love Harry Potter films. Those are very influential on me when I was a young, um, a young child. Um, um, Lord of the Rings films, those are very influential. Um, Spielberg films, I think a lot of people can agree with that. Uh, I also really do, I also really do enjoy some of the more classic, um, films that I was introduced to, um, things that I was passed on from my parents, like, um, in particular Hitchcock films and watching a lot of action films like James Bond growing up, um, specifically James Bond films. Those are some of my, my biggest influences that kind of laid the foundation for what I got into. Um, but I, I learn more all the time. I'm also... I also have some favorite actors. I do 
particularly love Meryl Streep. I think she's, I mean, who doesn't? Um, but I know, I know a certain amount about that woman as well. Uh, and within the Shimona, I've been able to expand uh, into, I've been able to take, like I said, about supplementing information, uh, your knowledge. I've been able to start with films and genres for actors that I've loved um, a good handful of, and I began, began to expand and make my knowledge of their filmographies or that, that much more com comprehensive through the showdown. So I really, I'm really grateful for that. Now, I, I love your personality, especially how you, you know, come out onto a live audience. Do you feel nervous, uh, you know, playing these games in front of uh, live people? Um, I, there's, there's always nerves and I most recently had my first, um, my, my enter, when I entered the league with the, the, the state, the global pandemic going on, um, I had to enter the league, uh, through digital matches and I just had my first, um, live event, uh, when I played for the championship belt. Um, and I was absolutely nervous when I was going in there, but it was almost like feeding, I was taking each of those little um, hangs of nervousness and almost feeding them into, they were just getting thrown in the pot and they were adding to that, that pot of excitement. Um, it was kind of giving me a rush and kind of uh, uh, getting me that much more excited uh, to play the match. So I will never say, I will never say I'm not nervous about something like that because I always am, but nerves are a very good thing because they give you a rush. Um, and fortunately for me, um, they keep you, they keep me focused and they actually kind of heighten my focus and my concentration, um, because I never get complacent going into those events. And absolutely when I played the championship match, um, I had a nice little diet combination of ner nerves and adrenaline, um, that kept me really focused and on, on, on my best game in that match. Tell us about this, uh, Lady Justice uh, persona that you created. Where did that came from? Uh, that was a simple inspiration uh, when I started. I wanted, um, looking for something iconic and powerful. Um, it also helps that I um, have a few people who practice law in my family. So it was already something kind of, that meant something to me personally. Uh, but also I represent, I realized could be represented uh, pretty iconically. Um, between the blindfold and the scales of justice um, and the, the pretty powerful sword. It was just a natural, um, a natural fit with all of that. And I also thought that the justice character could be something, um, justice seems can play it both ways, be something a little ominous, a little uh, looming and, and intimidating, but also very empowering. Um, and I thought that was a great, uh, a great vehicle to kind of charge in and enter enter the arena and enter the game, um, and I look forward to taking that character in even in even in even cooler, more interesting, very very interesting directions as the as the as my competition moves forward. So, when the audiences chant out your name, Lady Justice, uh, how does that feel? Nothing better. There's nothing better. That's 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 what we play for. That's what it's all about. Um, that's, that's a high that, that can't be matched. Um, and looking, I'm looking quite forward to, um, our live event in New York, um, coming up in a few weeks. Uh, I think that will be a great, New York is great. That venue is great. It should be, uh, the energy hearing, hopefully a couple more Lady Justice chants out there. Yeah. Tell, tell us more about this October 9th, uh, event that, uh, um, that you're going going to New York that uh, you're traveling to. So, so do you know who you're facing? I am. I am playing against uh, actually one of my very own faction mates. Uh, he has been Chance Ellison has been on his um, his own path uh, towards the singles belt. He he's the number one contender right now. He is. Uh, uh, had to overcome many difficult competitors on his path here. Um, he's earned the victories, and he's he, he's next up to challenge for the belt. And I'm the current belt holder, so this is, should be a very interesting uh, matchup. With usually, I think we're it's pretty um, commonplace to play somebody from a different faction, um, who's from a completely different network, uh, with their own um, unique, more more private uh, study habits and, and strategies. 
Um, but Chance and I are on the same faction, which means that we've been studying together and helping each other strategize and working together all year long. So this should be um, exciting, uh, exciting in all the right ways and challenging in all the right ways uh, to get to play somebody you really, really have um, an intimate knowledge of, of their film knowledge, the scope of their film knowledge. So it's, it's a civil war of types, as you will, in corruption. Um, and I'm really excited to have that be the, the layout for my first title defense. I, I guess the better question is, who, who's, who's going to be behind you uh, during, the, during this competition? I mean, if you're both <laughs> from the same faction. That's, that's the real pickle, isn't it? Um, our manager, Shannon Bar Barney, is a woman of many, many talents. So I wouldn't put it past her. Um, to be able to manage both of us uh, simultaneously. She's done it before. There was a corruption invitation invitational last season where Chance Ellison himself um, competed against uh, Mike Kalinowski for the IG uh, tournament finals. So Shannon's no stranger uh, to, um, to juggling many, many talented players at once and compartmentalizing and getting that done. I wouldn't be surprised if she does it again. That is excellent. I know you can't give up your strategies so close to the championship, but uh, have have you been uh, have you been studying your opponent uh, carefully to make sure and strategize? Always, you know that's 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 if you're anybody who's serious. I think any competitor who's really serious about this has to, which I've always um, promoted. I've always been it's been no secret about how I approach the game. I take every competitor I, I take every opponent seriously and and if you um the same way you would if you were in any other kind of sport whether you're basketball football um you have to be as prepared as possible and I have um already considered I'm on, ongoing uh, as my match approaches I'm considering all angles uh to make myself as prepared as possible against my opponent um so I am I am I can assure you <laughs> that I am thinking ahead. Most excellent. Well, Marisol, hey, this is a great uh, conversation about uh, your path to, uh, through a uh, Schmodown. And, you know, if, uh, if you win on October 9th, then you, you are setting more records. So that, that is a proud achievement uh, by itself. So congratulations. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Looking forward to it and, and looking forward to already set history with this first win and i'm looking forward to keeping that streak going absolutely absolutely well thank you very much hopefully we get to talk again maybe uh, perhaps uh, after your your next uh, defense of the championship that would that's the plan that would be wonderful thanks so much for having me safe travels thank you